Yeah, g'day heathers and gentlemen, and welcome back to this old lathe channel. I've been upgrading this beautiful old Schaublin 125 CNC to a modern controller, Linux CNC. Haven't worked on it for a while, I was on holiday. Man, I wonder what I was up to. Ah uh, yeah. I need to connect up all the wiring again. Before I went away on holiday, I put all the parts into the control cabinet, but then I just closed the door and didn't connect anything. Now before I can wire everything up, I've got that problem where these connectors are hitting over here somewhere on the VFD and the filter. So let's have a look at that. All right, this should help me work out where the specific interference is. Well, the good news is, it looks like I've only got one connector which is causing me problems, and that's this one. Use some sort of a quick 90 degree at the back shell, this will probably work. All the rest of them seem to have plenty of clearance. Bummer is that I've already made these cables at least twice. The other one I forgot to connect two wires, so I had to like splice them in. So this was the good one. I think what I'm going to do is switch the good cable onto this position and remake this cable with a 90 degree back shell. I went looking for 90 degree back shells for SCSI connectors on the internet, but I couldn't find any. So I decided just to model them, made it out of three parts, and then just 3D printed them. Took me a couple of iterations to get this to work. The first one I didn't really leave enough space for the pins, so the, the connector doesn't really fit in. But I got it to fit on the second one. And the little moulding for the ears from the original also fit nicely. I guess it's time I start welding it all together. So with all the wires now soldered, next comes the hard part, trying to get them all to fit within that back shell I made. There's probably a right way to do this, and I'm guessing that this is not it, but let's see. Whoops, forgot the mounting screw. Well, there we have it. Not exactly the prettiest back shell ever. I showed the prototype to Nico and talked about how I put these captive nut depressions in it, but unfortunately I'd got the dimensions wrong. Those are for M2.5 and, and I'm using M3. He said if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing and I should completely redesign it. Nah, that's good enough. Right, before I prepare the other end of this cable, just I'll just make sure it's actually going to work. Nope. I put it in back to front. I need the wedge of the connector facing out the other way. That's better. Great. No worries there. Okay, next up I need to dress these cables, work out where they'll go, and cut them to length. While I was doing this wiring, there was a couple of things which I'd sort of only half-assed done the first time. There were some wires which I'd labelled wrong. Rather than correcting the labelling, I just used a felt pen to sort of amend it. Well, that's going to fall off, that's not good. So I went and relabeled those. You know, it's quite important on this, this sort of thing. Probably the oldest safety standard in aviation is to not run control cables in such a way that the turnbuckles can be interchanged, re reversing the control direction of the control surface. And yet, I've heard rumours that about 10, 15 years ago, that actually happened on an Airbus A320, where wires got reversed in the side stick, and when the pilot took off on the first flight after maintenance, the ailerons were operating in the opposite sense. Luckily the pilot worked it out pretty quick and handed over control to the co-pilot, but not a good thing to happen. This is not such a big risk, but if I didn't label everything well on this machine, I'd soon get lost and it wouldn't work. Man, wiring sure is time consuming. I'm glad to get this part of the project pretty much completed. The last major wiring project is going to be the control panel interface. After what seems like days and days of wiring, I'm back to where I was. I don't actually need to cover this up, but I want to get a feeling of 
appropriate. Well, that looks a bit neater. I guess I need to get over my dislike for tie wraps. If aircraft manufacturers are using them in the fire zone of engines, they must be good enough. Well, that's that one down, finally. So this is the point where you expect me to just crank up the machine and make some amazing parts. I would like nothing more. However, I need to reconnect all the brain and I've probably got a bit of configuration to do. And let's be honest, I did that wiring and I'm sure I will have broken something and need to troubleshoot it. So I'm all out of time. Thanks a lot for watching. Better luck next time.